Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of September. Indian PM Modi targets opposition for lying over farm bills amid nationwide protests. Activists highlight human rights violation in Pakistan administered Kashmir, urges UN to intervene. And Sri Lanka's former president must take responsibility for Easter Sunday attack, says suspended IGP. And now for all the details. Opposition parties in India staged nationwide protests on Friday against the newly passed farm bills that give farmers the option to sell their produce to private buyers. Many farmer organizations have opposed the move, saying it will leave small growers with little bargaining power. Prime Minister Modi has defended the legislation, terming them historic and accused farmers were being misled by the opposition. Farmers and opposition political parties in India took to the streets and blocked railways on Friday as part of nationwide protests against three contentious farm bills which were passed by the parliament earlier this week. The government says the bills will make it easier for farmers to sell their produce directly to big buyers and will remove middlemen from agriculture trade, allowing farmers to sell to institutional buyers and large retailers. But such assurances have failed to mollify millions of farmers, especially in states such as Punjab and Haryana, India's northern farm belt. The protesting farmers said they believe it will lead to dominance of private companies and coercion in signing of long-term, non-beneficial contracts. मोदी सरकार जो आदेश लाकर तो लागू करके तो सभी लोगों का नुकसान कर रहा बहुत बड़ा इसलिए सभी लोगों के अंदर बहुत बड़ा रोष है इस रोष के कारण आज हमारे परिवार जो छड़कों पे उतर आए हैं। Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday during a virtual address to workers of his ruling Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP accused opposition parties of misleading farmers. The BJP has decided to start a 15-day awareness campaign on the new farm bills. इन दिनों अपने राजनीतिक स्वार्थ की वजह से किसानों के कंधे पर बंदूक के फोड़ रहे हैं, किसानों को भ्रमित करने में लगे हैं, ये लोग अफवाहें फैला रहे हैं, देश के किसानों को ऐसी किसी भी अफवाह से बचाना, कृषि सुधार का महत्व समझाना भारतीय जनता पार्टी के हम सभी कार्यकर्ताओं का बहुत बड़ा कर्तव्य है। As part of a nationwide shutdown called by India's leading farmer organizations, demonstrators also blocked highways leading to capital New Delhi using trucks, tractors and combined harvesters. Though protests have remained peaceful, police in various states beefed up security in the hope of heading off any violence, especially around New Delhi. India took up the issue of cross-border terrorism in the informal meeting of SARC foreign ministers which happened virtually on the sidelines of UNGA this year. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar said it was crucial to take a collective resolve to defeat the scourge of terrorism, including the forces that nurture, support and encourage it. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Thursday listed cross-border terrorism, blocking of connectivity and obstruction of trade as the key challenges confronting South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SARC. In the informal meeting of SARC foreign ministers which happened virtually on the sidelines of UNGA this year, he called upon SARC member states to collectively resolve to defeat the scourge of terrorism including the forces that nurture, support and encourage it. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, however, used the SARC platform and made a veiled reference to Jammu and Kashmir issue. This was again wrecked up at another forum of Foreign Minister's Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures. It is very typical of Pakistan 
to use such fora to raise bilateral and contentious issues which are against the the principles of of such for of organizations as well as against the spirit of these meetings meanwhile india's foreign minister reiterated india's continued commitment to assisting the sark neighbors in combating covid-19 pandemic increased collaboration in the fight against covid-19 connectivity and trade were also discussed in the meeting moving on Activists on Thursday highlighted atrocities in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan and urged the UN Human Rights Council to stop Pakistan from treating people in the illegally occupied territories like animals. They demanded Pakistan should be tried for war crimes. Activists on Thursday highlighted atrocities in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. and urged the UN Human Rights Council to intervene and stop Pakistan from treating people in the illegally occupied region like animals activist Sajjad Raja even broke down while making an intervention and said the election act 2020 has taken away all constitutional civil and political rights of the citizens of Pakistan administered Kashmir allowing Pakistani forces to act with impunity in brazen violations of the UN resolutions on Kashmir our activities opposing accession to pakistan have been declared anti state in flagrant violation of united nations resolutions we are treated as traitors in our own home simply for defending it by declaring our political activities illegal this act gives the pakistani army a free hand to assassinate our people through targeted killings and enforce disappearances meanwhile activist amjad ayub mirza demanded that belt and road initiative projects between china and pakistan should be declared illegal which have led to an increase in human rights violations and rampant destruction of natural resources in gilgit baltistan he urged the un that pakistan be tried for war crimes and that the world should collectively demand the withdrawal of pakistan army from the illegally occupied territories in news from nepal Opposition Nepali Congress has slammed the Prime Minister Oli led Nepal government for making comments over the issue of land encroachment by China before officials sent to the claimed site returned back and filed a field report. Nepal's main opposition Nepali Congress party has condemned the foreign ministry for issuing a clarification on the alleged encroachment of the country's territory by China in Humla district. without waiting for the report from local authorities that visited the disputed site the foreign ministry had issued a press release earlier this week stating that on the basis of official records reports of field inspection and boundary maps nepal's department of survey had confirmed that the buildings said to be built by china were not in nepali territory nepali congress spokesperson vishwa prakash sharma issuing a press release has said The foreign ministry made a hasty comment when it refuted allegation of encroachment of Nepali territory by China before government authorities submitted their report. He added in case of a border dispute it is best to make public the government's views on the basis of inputs from the local administration political parties and media. Local media since last week carried reports of land encroachment by China by illegally constructing nine buildings in Lapcha Bagar area of Nepal's Humla district which is only accessible by airways. In news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's suspended Inspector General of Police Pujith Jayasundra has said that former President Maithripala Sirisena should take responsibility for the Easter Sunday attack on 21st April 2019. Testifying before the presidential panel probing the attacks on Thursday, Jay Sundara said the attack was due to a breakdown in long-term political plans. Following intelligence information that there was going to be bomb attacks, he had informed senior officials who had been appointed to cover the whole island regarding the attack that such an attack was possible. Pujit Jay Sundara said the CID charged him and former defense secretary Hema Sri Fernando with murder without any recommendation. Meanwhile, former president Maithripala Sirisena is scheduled to appear before the commission on 5th of October and former prime minister Ranil Wickremasinghe will testify before the panel on October 6th. 
Women in Afghanistan are paying a way for a better future and upliftment where rights activist Mariam Durrani has found a fresh outlet for her decades of advocacy, a new fitness center for Afghan women. Durrani is a fierce campaigner for women's rights in Afghanistan's southern province of Kandhar, where the Islamist Taliban militant take a conservative stance on the position of women. 36-year-old rights activist Mariam Durrani in Afghanistan's southern province of Kandahar has found a fresh outlet for her decades of advocacy, a new fitness center for women that creates safe space for them. Durrani runs a radio station for women and has served on the provincial council. Last year, Durrani switched tag to open a female-only gym, which draws about 50 women to attend each day. With a troop withdrawal signed between the United States and the Taliban, who have fought a bloody war for 19 years, many women in Afghanistan worry the militant group may exert its influence through formal political channels. When the Taliban ruled Afghanistan, they banned education for females and barred women from leaving the house without a male relative. The group says it has changed, but many women remain skeptical. ولی متاسفانه چیزی که مرا خیلی ناراحت ساخت عکس العمل مردای ما بودن مخصوصا مردهایی که تسلیم کرده بودن مردانی که در میدیا کار میکردن کسانی که خودشان از صاحب همو چی میگن یک ایدئولوژی یک ایده در جامعه میدانستند کسانی که فکر میکردن خیلی روشن فکر هستند و با فرهنگ هستند اونا بودن که خیلی زیاد در قسمت زی جایگاه تخریبات داشتند و مرا تاوین و تغییر کردن که این جایگاه یک جایگاه بد و زش و قیل شریعت تا بیان کردن. For now, Durrani's focus is on serving the dozens of women who attend the club, whom she describes as a cross-section of society, including housewives and women who work outside the home, especially after the coronavirus lockdown that has forced her gym to close for nearly three months from March 28. In a miraculous incident, a COVID-19 positive woman who gave birth to a premature baby in southern India has recovered from the disease along with her daughter. The doctors performed an emergency cesarean section on the 29-year-old mother who was admitted to the hospital in August and was diagnosed with COVID-19 after complaining of breathing discomfort. In what the doctors called a COVID-19 miracle, an infected duo of a premature baby with underdeveloped lungs and mother whose whole family was infected as well were cured and reunited with their loved ones in India's southern Chennai city. 29-year-old Priya Dashni was admitted to the hospital on August 21 and was diagnosed with coronavirus complaining of breathing discomfort. She was in her 28th week of pregnancy and hence the lungs of her baby were not fully developed. When we as a team of doctors and nurses continuously work 24-7 to take care of these patients and then when we see the whole family reunited and we are uh, seeing them getting ready for discharge and going home tomorrow. Doctors performed an emergency cesarean section after putting Priya Dashni on a medically induced coma as oxygen levels in her blood dropped. She woke up from the coma after nearly a month on September 22 to see her baby girl. I went into the operation theater, they gave me anesthesia or something and uh, within 20 minutes my baby was taken out and she was just 1 kg of weight. So she was in NICU for the past one month and now she's like getting better. Chennai city alone has reported a total of over 159,680 coronavirus cases so far. The deadly virus tally across India has zoomed past 5.8 million. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन